<coughs> lost control again. All right. After the math facts, I usually teach them a way to memorize data and information. And I find that probably, mm, well, I started to say the second most limiting factor is the, the inefficient, ineffective way that people memorize data and information. But math facts, you know, that's kind of a specialized one. Spelling's kind of a specialized one. But when throughout their life, they're going to be memorizing information and facts and data and stuff like that. And the way they do it, again, the word memorization just lures them in to being auditory and just repeating the th stuff over and over and over again. So <clears throat> what I did was, okay, what would be, what would be a better way to do it? What would be a, a, a visual way to do it? And basically, I came up with two ways. One would be just to memorize the words, like if a teacher gave you a study guide, and it had dates and places and people's names and laws' names and stuff like that on it. There are some people that just sit there and memorize the words, like we were talking about before with the law students or with the Koran or something like that. That doesn't work for me. I mean, I don't like that at all. And besides that, it doesn't enhance learning. Learning is about creating experience, creating subjective experience. It's about taking the words, which are nothing more than labels, and attaching them to experience, creating some sort of experience that goes with that. So how can we do that whenever somebody is trying to memorize data and facts? And then it about dawned on me. We create the context for what we're trying to memorize. Okay? So if, you're, if you have a history lesson, let's say, you say, okay, what, would that, what is this lesson about? And you get a picture in your mind of the, what it's about or of the context. If it's a science lesson, what is this lesson about? What are all these facts and figures about that I'm supposed to memorize? And what, what kind of overall picture can I create about the, the situation, if you will, that I put this, these facts and figures in? So you, you come up with, um, uh, like here in America, we have a story in our history books about Christopher Columbus discovering America. I'm sure uh, Di has one about, uh, what, Captain Cook discovering Australia. You know, and so every country probably is discovered by somebody, and they have a history lesson about it. Another one here in the United States that, that's in the history books, and there's lots of them, is about the story of how the Panama Canal was, was created and dug and, and how much it cost and who authorized it and what were all the problems with it and things like this. Um, so what you do in each of those situations is that you come up with a context to set the information in. So with Christopher Columbus discovering America, and I'm not going to draw this because you guys laughed at my horse. No, you haven't, you're, going, you're going to laugh at my horse when I do it. I'm not going to draw this. I think this horse has been a really, really old story, Don. <laughs> um, so I want you to visualize something in your mind's eye. And this is what I do with kids. I, I don't literally draw this out for kids. I want them to visualize it. And so I'll, I'll treat you as one student. I want you to imagine what would be there when somebody was discovering a new country. In my mind, there would be an ocean and there would be a, a piece of land. You can put trees on the land if you want to. In the ocean, there's three ships because Columbus came over here in three ships. Okay? So you have the context set up. Now I want you to imagine that there's a group of men dressed kind of funny and, and helmets and stuff like this, and they're on the beach. And one of them has a, a flag with a long staff on it, and he's planting that flag in the sand and saying, I declare this land the you know, name of. <coughs> Okay, so on that flag, I want you to put um, the country that he came from. How many of you know what country Columbus came from? Spain. Spain. So on the flag, you put Spain. That's one of the things that the teachers want you to know. What's another thing the teachers want you to know about this? The year. The year. On the flag, now you can put this any place you want to. Just put it someplace lo logical. So maybe on the flag, you put 1492. Now what I want you to do is to vividly image this because it's not going to work if you don't image it. So you have Columbus and I want you to put, you know, what, hello, my name is Columbus. Or you can put it across <laughs> his back or across it like a football jersey or something like this. But someplace put Columbus on the man that's planting the flag. So you have the country, Spain. You have the, the date that he arrived. You have his name. Why don't you over in the, the um, edge of the sand, over towards the foliage, put a sign up that says America, because this is, the, this is what he found. This is the America that he founded. All right, now, you zoom back, and over there are the three ships. 
you zoom into your picture and up to the ship, and, and kids love to zoom, by the way. You zoom up to the next to the ship, and the name of the ships are the, the Pinta, the Nina, and the Santa Maria. Image them real carefully, and if you can't, if you're having trouble visualizing them, spell them backwards, each of them. So you have Nina, the Pinta, and the Santa Maria. Okay? Everybody with me so far? Now I want you to float up into the air like you're a, a satellite or something and look across the ocean and there's the country of Spain and sitting on a throne is a queen with a crown on her head and she has a tag on her that says Isabella. She's the one that financed the whole trip. Okay? Now once you put all the data that you're supposed to memorize in this picture, the next step that you do is you go back and you review the picture with sound put a soundtrack to it, so to speak. And you can do that in two ways. But what you're trying to do is set up the retrieval system. You're trying to say, when you look at Isabella, you want to say the word Isabella while you are seeing the word Isabella. So you look over there and you say, that's Queen Isabella, she financed the trip. Then you come back here and there's the three ships that Columbus came over on, the Nina, the Pinta, and the Santa Maria. And you say those words while you are looking at the names on the sides of the ship. You zoom over to the beach, there's Columbus, the guy that discovered America, and he came from Spain in 1492. And the critical thing is you do that while you're looking at it. If you will do that review several times over time, it will drop it into long-term memory. Okay? So now, and I want you just to notice what ha we haven't even done a practice, by the way, but I just want you to notice what happens in your mind when I say, okay, the first question on your test is what year did Columbus discover America? And what happened in your mind? Yeah, the, either the whole picture came up or the picture of the flag came up. What was the name of the second ship that I said? Pinta? Name all three of them. <laughs> we don't have any expectation. <laughs> So what happens is that when you, when you sit there and you say those names, or you can tell a story. Now, kids love this, too. So make up a story about this guy. Says, well, there was this dude named Columbus, you know, and he talked <laughs> to the Queen Isabella from, over in Spain and giving him all this money so he could make this trip. And he was really just an explorer. He just liked to have sailed the ship. And he sailed over here in you know, the Pinta and the Santa Maria, and he discovered America in 1492. <clears throat> so it's like they almost make the story up, which really brings it all together in the form of a story. And which makes it more comprehensible to them. Instead of just isolated facts, now it's a, it's a subjective learning experience. Does that make sense? Okay. <clears throat> so, here's the fun part. I want you to get with somebody that you, don't, you have not been with yet. I want you, it would be really nice if you could get with somebody that's um, from a different country or they're from a different state. They have different kinds of history lessons. Or, or you, can all, you can share a science lesson if you know some science. You, you can share a lesson in anything. But I want you to think up something that people would need to memorize, like the Christopher Columbus story. And something that you know, something that you have the facts up. I mean, you gotta, you, you got to know what it is. So you're, you're going you're gonna to be in twos again. Okay, let me, let me finish the instruction. You're going to be in twos again. So if I come up with a story, okay, who's doing all the talking in the background? If I, I may want to come up with a story about the history of my family and have names of people, that's okay, and their ages. Anything that would have factual information in it. You can make it up if you want to, but you need to remember what you made up. Okay? Because it's going to go like this. So let's suppose that um, um, with Kat, since she's new, I'll pick on her. Let's suppose with Kat that I say, now she's from Montana, so she doesn't know Oklahoma history, so I say, okay, I'm going to tell you about the, the run of 89 in Oklahoma. And so I start telling her the story, and I'll be sure that I put in facts and figures and things. And her job is to say, wait a minute, and then make sure that she has a picture of each of the facts in the appropriate place. I'm not interested in overloading anybody. I don't want a dissertation or anything like this. So six to ten facts will be enough in the story. And she, she puts them into her picture. She sets up the picture to begin with. And then she puts the facts into her picture. And then I say, okay, now, let's review the facts. 
and I can help her review the facts or she can do it all by herself, regardless whichever way she says. <coughs> then I want her to teach me something that she knows that I don't know. So she goes through the same process with me, and then after we've gone through the same process with each other, we test each other. So I test her on what I taught her. She tests me on what she taught me. <coughs> okay? That's fairly simple, right? Mm -hmm. yeah. It depends on setting the context up first and then just putting the information in. So would it, would it, be, would it be helpful if you just, like everybody on this side of the room, found somebody on this side of the room or everybody on this side of the room found somebody over here or something like that just so that you kind of get to know somebody that you haven't worked with yet. <laughs>